Why does intimacy decrease after marriage or relationships? Now, this is not every relationship, all right? I'm not trying to, but it is a common theme that you hear in relationships where people have, have had intimacy in 10 years. And so we're gonna talk about this in a little more detail. We're gonna talk about the subconscious, conscious mind, man versus women, and then we'll talk about three factors that actually are associated with influencing intimacy or relations. But let me tell you a little bit about my channel. We have relationships, we have parenting, we have personal growth and attachment theory. Today's gonna to be focused more on the relationship aspect, right? And so this will hopefully give some insight and this is gonna be a series where I'm going to more detail in each one of the three topics, but I feel like this might be a good overview and get background before we go into the nitty and the gritty. So conscious versus subconscious. Now, the subconscious and conscious mind is huge because I think it's a lot of times that people have problems with intimacy, it's really not in their conscious control. A lot of, oh, I didn't do that, or I'm not doing that. Okay, you have to understand how powerful your subconscious is. And if you wanna know more about it in more depth, you can check out this video, right? Or look in the description box below. But I'm gonna give you a little bit of high view understanding of conscious mind and subconscious mind. So the conscious mind, all right, that has to do with your media thought, things that are in your front of your, your brain and things you're doing right now or what you're thinking about doing. But your subconscious is built of your beliefs, your understandings, your thought process, your habits, all that is gonna be carried in your subconscious. And what people don't realize is in your conscious mind, you can hold about 50 to 200 bits of information per second, which is a lot of information but your subconscious holds 20 million bits of information per second. If you think about that, that is wild. Like, oh, I'm gonna to go to the store today, right? Let's say as an example, are you going to the store because you're just going to the store or is it because you have a child that needs milk and if they don't get milk, they'll be upset and it causes your day to be ruined. So subconsciously you end up at the store getting the milk and everything else because you want to, but really truly it's driven by your subconscious drive to go there, right? That's just an example. But your subconscious is huge. So a lot of the actions that we think we're doing, we are doing it consciously, but really and truly it's being led by our subconscious, which is the title of that video I talked about earlier. So I really want you to kind of understand the magnitude of the 50 to 200 bits of information with your conscious and then the 200, 20 million bits of information per second with the subconscious, so it kind of gives you how dramatic is our subconscious and the habits and beliefs have an effect on our choices. All right, All right. so men and women and the different types of intimacy. So when you talk about men and women, you gotta look at it from these two different factors. You have physical intimacy and then you have emotional intimacy and connection. And they kind of differ when you look at it from men and women. All right, so let's look at it from the women's perspective. Women usually love that emotional intimacy and connection, but it sometimes could fear or be resentful for that physical intimacy. While the men, they actually long for the physical intimacy, but they may fear the emotional intimacy and connection. So you see this a lot with men, they, they try to do things and work really hard, but a lot of the things that they're doing, they're trying to avoid being in the in intimacy of the emotional and the connection part because it wasn't really modeled to them when they were growing up. They grew up in a situation where when they cried, they were like, stop, stop crying, you don't cry. Don't show emotions, don't be vulnerable because it wasn't shown to them. So what happens is they kind of fear because they don't even really truly know it, understand it. But from the physical intimacy perspective, they almost are patted on the back and rewarded. Society really rewards men for the sexual intimacy or the physical intimacy a lot in this society. So they look for doing more of that to get that approval. Well, women on the other hand, a little different, all right? They grow up with like, a cute daughter. I know because my daughter's so cute. Loves and hugs and kisses and it's okay to cry and all these things before for, for, for a daughter they grow up and have that emotional connection. They understand how to communicate in that way. But the physical intimacy can be very scary for a lot of different reasons. Definitely if they were modeled how to take control of the physical intimacy in their hands. 
And a lot of times um, resentment can come from it because they feel like the physical intimacy is overshadowing the emotional intimacy, which they understand is important. And the, or they are in a situation where physical abuse could happen that can also make them kind of weary of it. So with men and women, they are kind of on the polar opposites. And this is in general, not everybody's this way. They can have women one way and men the other way, or it could be a hosh posh, uh, unless you had like really secure parents that can uh, be there for you to teach you boundaries in the physical world, but also be show emotional connection to women and men alike. All right, so let's talk about the three ways where intimacy can be actually affected in relationships. Now, these three areas will look into the mind and intellect, the body, and also the spiritual and the emotional part of it, right? Spiritual, emotional, slash. I'm, again, I'm gonna do a deeper dive in each one of these, right? But this is just an overview and gives you more background on the subconscious and conscious, also men and women's differences, but also go into more detail with this uh, in other videos. So number one, number one is gonna be the mind and intellect. And I think we can fog the mind or crisp the mind, make it more sharp, is understanding resentment and needs. And by understanding resentment and needs, it can be beneficial in multiple ways. If somebody feels resentful because they didn't get their needs met, and that could be safety, security, a bunch of different ones, we'll go in more detail in that video, what happens is that can cause a block in them that can cause animosity towards the other individual because they feel like their needs are not getting met. All right, again, that's number one. Number two, body. The body has a lot of different ways where you can function like with, with hormones like testosterone, estrogen has a different effect, different medications like birth control can have an, a, a problem with it. Even the women's cycle, again, we'll talk about more in depth with those different things. Those can have an effect on what intimacy, how that can, can fluctuate in those different areas. And then lastly, it's gonna be the spiritual and emotional. Now, I think this actually has to come from a point of fear and the fear can prevent the, the emotional intimacy, but also it can actually affect the physical intimacy aspect of it too. Um, and the physical intimacy and, and the emotional intimacy that's caused by past trauma kind of produces fear in the current moment. And again, a conscious subconscious our subconscious is gonna make sure we don't relive that trauma in the past, so we have different coping mechanisms to make sure we can be past that. Again, there'll be another video on that. But those are the three different ways where intimacy is, is, is modified, in, my, in this video I'm talking about decreased, in, in relationships. Let's do the final thoughts. Now, the final thoughts, guys, please like and subscribe to this video. And I really like, the. The resentment I kind of did a video on and body people kind of understand, the fearful one is I really think is a huge component that's really not a lot of people I've really been talking about. And I'm really excited to go into more depth with that because that may actually give some highlight to some individuals to help them get past some of the things that may be hindering their emotional intimacy, but also their physical intimacy as, as well. But since I really want to talk about that, but I realized I need to talk about the other ones in depth. So if those two areas are not working with the the resentment and the body and everything else, it may be a mute point for that fear. But I really am excited to go into this series. It's gonna be a great one and hopefully it has value. Please tell me if you wanna hear anything specifically that has to do with any part of that aspect of those three things or more in depth with the subconscious conscious mind, let me know. I haven't started recording the those videos, but if you give me some input, I'll see if I can be able to add that in while I'm doing those videos. But as in all my calls, guys, um, and videos, um, I, you know, I'm a dad, I, I take care of my daughter. We need to tell our kids we love them on a consistent basis. Stop what you're doing and give them a hug. Tell them that you love them. They need to hear it not just once, not just twice, on a consistent basis throughout their lives. And even when they hit 23, 24, 30, they need to hear it. But also make sure you tell them that they're worthy for who they are, not because of what they do for you or anything else, but them being born pushed you to become a better person. And because of that, they're automatically worthy for who they are. And they're gonna have an effect on people's lives in a positive way because of that drive and that worthiness. So looking forward to the series and please give me your feedback and comments, like, subscribe, and I'll see you in the next video.